Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Superman Legacy will now be known as Superman, just Superman, as writer-director James Gunn shares an official first look photo of Kal-El's chest emblem and confirms that he is dropping the legacy from the title so that it shares its title with the 1978 Richard Donner, Christopher Reeve original classic, which tells us that James Gunn must really have the goods to be able to pull this off. In this video, I'm gonna break down everything we know about this movie and what its stacked cast tells us about what kind of Superman story this must be. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes launching your own website a breeze. Okay, February 29th, Leap Day, James Gunn shared the first official look at Superman's emblem covered in snow, hinting that this might be the Fortress of Solitude. Gunn announced this on Instagram, writing this is the caption, overjoyed to be announcing the start of principal photography on Superman today, February 29th, which just so happens to be, coincidentally and unplanned, Superman's birthday. When I finished the first draft of the script, I called the film Superman Legacy. By the time I locked the final draft, it was clear the title was Superman. Making our way to you July 2025. Hashtag Superman. Hashtag Happy Birthday Clark. Hashtag Leap Year. Hashtag Up Up and Away. So Superman releases July 11th, 2025. James Gunn is writing and directing the film. In July 2025, by the way, it's going to be an insanely packed month. Jurassic World 4 is coming July 2nd, 2025. Superman, of course, July 11th. And Marvel's Fantastic Four, July 25th, 2025. February 20 29th is actually Superman's birthday. While John and Martha Kent might celebrate Clark's birthday as June 18th, the day he crash landed on their farm, according to DC Comics, Kal-El was born on a day on Krypton that coincides with February 29th. They first revealed this in an editor's column as an answer to a fan's letter and have since confirmed it in a DC official calendar that also revealed that Shazam chose the birthday of February 29th to be like his hero. Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons canonized this date in Superman Annual Number 11. DC has also made it official in Time Magazine that February 29th is Superman's birthday. Plus it just, you know, it makes sense. He can leap tall buildings in a single bound. Leap day, it just makes sense. Also another update from the set, Rachel Brosnahan, actress playing Lois Lane, shared this playful TikTok with David Cornsweet and Nicholas Holt, which they recorded after the first day of filming. So to be clear, Richard Donner's 1978 Superman was titled Just Superman, and it only went by Superman the movie and marketing material. But of course, doing this kind of thing isn't the first time Hollywood has done that. Like, we have Batman 1989 and The Batman 2022. We have Dune 1984 and Dune 2021. Suicide Squad 2016, The Suicide Squad 2021. And hey, James Gunn did that one too. I personally just don't think it insults the memory of the 1978 film, and I think audiences will be able to tell the difference. And honestly, I think we need a movie movie just called Superman right now because we need a real thematic reset with all comic book cinema. We need to remember why we do this. Clearly Marvel Studios is feeling the same thing by doing a classic Fantastic Four film set at least in part in the 1960s, which is again coming out that same month. Richard Donner's 1978 Superman remains perhaps the most important comic book superhero film ever made. James Gunn obviously listed it as one of his top five comic book films. Kevin Feige brings it up again and again as the single film he wanted all of his early Marvel titles to aim to recapture the magic of. Kevin Feige has always idolized Richard Donner, and when he was a film student at USC, he got his start working for the Donner's company. But then realizing that Richard Donner only worked like every few years, to instead wanting to work all the time for Richard Donner's stellar producer wife, Lauren Schuller Donner, who ended up becoming the executive producer of the first X-Men film in 2000. And that's how Kevin Feige got his start with Marvel films. Also, without Superman 1978, we would not have had Batman 1989, and without the toy profits from that movie, we would not have had Toy Biz with Ike Perlmutter and Avi Arad buying Marvel Comics in the 1990s and eventually paying way for the financial future of the MCU with Kevin Feige creatively steering that ship. So I just want to point out how big a deal it is for James Gunn to title this movie Superman. But let's break down the cast for this movie because it looks incredible. Last year, David Cornsweet was confirmed as Superman, Kal-El Clark Kent. And I did a whole video talking about how David Cornsweet's background as a Juilliard actor who idolized the true Boy Scout spirit of Superman is something they were looking for because that's pretty much what the background of Christopher Reeve was. Rachel Brosnahan was confirmed as Lois Lane, and then over the months, various others have been announced for this cast, including Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, confirmed in December. And at that time, James Gunn said that he and Holt had met over dinner to discuss a version of Lex Luthor that will be different from anything you've ever seen before and will never forget. Now, the full cast was confirmed on February 22nd after a table read for the movie. The cast photo included James Gunn and Peter Safran, and the photo includes David Cornsweet as Superman, Rachel Brosnahan 
Monahan, Lois Lane, Nicholas Holt, Lex, and the newly announced Terrence Rosemore as Otis, Lex's longtime henchman, Skylar Gazondo playing Jimmy Olsen, Daily Planet photographer, Sarah Sampaio as Eve Teskmacher, Lex Luthor's assistant love interest, and then joining this group of regulars are a lineup of other super-powered meta beings, including Nathan Fillion playing Guy Gardner Green Lantern. Guy Gardner is one of the more abrasive members of the Green Lantern Corps, and yes, he will have Guy Gardner's iconic bowl cut haircut. Isabella Merced, who just appeared as Anya Corazon in Madam Web, is playing Hawk Girl, a DC hero empowered with the Nth Metal from the planet Thanagar, which is also the source of the Nth Metal that we saw used by Hawkman in the Black Adam film. Anthony Kerrigan, aka Noho Hank from Barry, is playing Rex Mason, aka Metamorpho, an archaeologist and superhero who can transmute his body parts into various forms and different elemental substances. Originally, it was just elements that could be found in the human body, but that did change over time. Eddie Gathegi, known for several roles over the years, including the Twilight films, but notably Darwin in X-Men First Class. He is playing Michael Holt, aka Mr. Terrific, which is, you know, a fun character known for his general natural aptitude for having natural aptitudes. He has his T-mask and he has his robot T-spears. Maria Gabriela De Faria is playing the engineer. The engineer is a member of the authority team who is a scientist who replaced her blood with nine pints of nanotechnology that she uses to create solid objects. Now, James Gunn in his God and Monsters slate did announce a future film version of the authority, so presumably the engineer could come back in that. Now, when these other superheroes were announced for the film back last July, James Gunn addressed some concerns that the film might have too many superheroes in it if it's just gonna be a Superman movie. James Gunn responded, quote, I've never used one movie to set up another movie. The characters are there because they help tell Superman's story better, not so we can set up separate projects in the franchise. Superman and Lois are the very clear protagonists. We all put so much thought into how we present ourselves in real life, but if you spend a lot of time online, your website needs the same level of attention. You might think that creating a professional looking website is difficult to do, but I've got good news. Squarespace is here to help. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that provides you with everything you need to do whatever you need with your website. Squarespace has templates and designs for pretty much everything. So whether you're making your very first website or sprucing up one for the new year, using Squarespace makes it super easy to customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. For instance, Squarespace makes it easy to sell merch. You can design your products and then save time and money by letting Squarespace handle the production, inventory, and shipping. And if you're selling any other kind of physical goods, digital goods, or even a service, Squarespace makes it easy to build your storefront and grow your business. Just head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rockstars to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also speculated to appear in this movie, but not confirmed yet, are Sean Gunn as Maxwell Lord. Maxwell Lord, of course, was a corporate villain played by Pedro Pascal in Wonder Woman 1984, and Millie Alcock as Kara Zor-El, aka Supergirl, though that might be for a different film. If it is for a different film, it was pretty unprecedented that an actor would be announced for a role before we even knew the movie was happening. And Wendell Pierce was just announced to be playing Perry White, Clark and Lois's boss. A fellow Juilliard alum, along with David Cornsweet, Wendell Pierce is best known as Bunk from The Wire and Robert Zane on Suit. So production now beginning as of February 29th at Trillet Studios in Atlanta under the working title Genesis. Gunn said that he planned to shoot the film for IMAX and the movie is also filming in Cleveland and Cincinnati, Ohio from April 1st through August 23rd. Interestingly, the Union Terminal building in Cincinnati is the inspiration for the original Hall of Justice, which could make sense for all the other heroes that are confirmed in this movie. But I don't think we're seeing a Justice League. I just think these are other metahumans who exist in Superman's world. I think these other heroes being in the movie suggests that we are not seeing another Superman Superman origin story, as James Gunn has posted in the past, saying, quote, I think we've seen his origin enough in film at this time. Gunn has also said, quote, Superman is a man of two worlds, Clark with Lois, Jimmy and Perry, and Superman with his meta-human compatriots. How could I tell a full story about Clark slash Superman without including all areas of his life? So we are looking at Superman who's a few years into this at least, and it isn't going to be a story about Metropolis and the whole world discovering Superman's existence and adapting to it while he adapts to our society. No, this is going to be a world where he has reached a kind of status quo. And it's going to be a world in which Lex Luthor has already had time to adapt to Superman's presence and to figure out his place in this new ecosystem and hierarchy. A hierarchy that also includes a Green Lantern and a Hawk Girl and a Metamorpho, Mr. Terrific, the Engineer. Like if there's a Green Lantern core, by definition, that widens the scope of the setting of the 
this film because Earth must exist alongside a cosmic intergalactic front. And they've just adjusted to that. Now, look, I think it's hard for audiences, especially the weary 2024 audiences that we all are, to conceive of what possible good Superman story could exist out there. Because for our entire lives, we've just attached ourselves to superhero movie universes governed by the world logic of people like Kevin Feige, or Zack Snyder, or Sam Raimi, or Christopher Nolan, or Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher, or Brian Singer and Simon Kinberg. And we've just been so inundated that we've forgotten that these movies don't need to be the whole launches of cinematic universes. They just need to do one thing, be good movies. And yeah, I think there is a good movie out there with a Superman who's already a Superman, a Clark Kent working for the Daily Planet with Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen in a metropolis on planet Earth that already has adjusted to extraterrestrial societies. And we know James Gunn knows how to do this. He's the one who really built out the cosmic front of the MCU with settings like Xandar and Morag and Nowhere in the Kiln that all felt like they had been lived in, interconnected and explorative, but still just a functional ecosystem where people were already living. And coming back to this first look photo of the Superman emblem that has snow covering it, to have that much snow on it, doesn't it imply that the Superman wearing that suit is laying down in that snow and might be a bit incapacitated? I don't know, maybe that snow isn't from Earth and Superman now finds himself crash landed in the ice of some other world in the cosmos where he would be temporarily depowered. Like Kal-El might be visiting the ruins of Krypton, like in that crazy 1988 Return to Krypton issue where Hawkgirl and Hawkman take Superman to the ruins of his home planet and the K radiation causes Superman to hallucinate an alternate life where Jor-El had discovered the cure to kryptonite radiation poisoning and there was a mass exodus from Krypton before its destruction and the Kryptonians settled on Earth and took over the human population, leading to Jor-El having to rebel against his own people? I'm getting carried away. That was a very weird issue and there's better Superman stories than comics to adapt. But there was a reason at some point why James Gunn decided to call this Superman Legacy. And yes, he's moved on from Legacy as a title, but what story element existed in that draft for him to care about the term Legacy? What did that mean? Well, think about it. For Lois Lane to be as equally a protagonist to this story implies that this is going to hark back to that classic 70s Richard Donner vibe of just a good journalism story. Something that embraces the media and celebrates what it should do. I wonder if Lex Luthor's plot in this movie is going to expose the legacy of the planet Krypton and its imperialistic history. And the reason why this movie is now called Superman is because Superman originally in the Siegel and Schuster comics was them taking back the term to combat the ubermensch term of Nazi ideology. And now Lex Luthor could point out that the term Superman is kind of a pejorative, that society is worshiping a god and that is a bad thing. Lex Luthor's plot in this movie could be to use the media to discredit Superman as part of a violent imperialistic legacy of another planet that was rightfully destroyed. And this could be what complicates Clark's relationship with Lois Lane at the Daily Planet. Now look, I'm just kind of spitballing here. I don't know if that makes a good movie. I don't have this written out, but I'm just kind of pitching this idea to show you guys that there's a lot of ways to explore Superman and Clark Kent in a movie that doesn't require planet Earth to be threatened with some apocalyptic event that levels cities and to bring in some new huge big bad from outer space. You have Lex Luthor right here on planet Earth. And I want to see a new version of Lex Luthor really get under Superman's skin. Look guys, I'm just excited. I have a son now. And I know I pissed off a lot of you guys by talking about being a dad a whole bunch in my breakdown for Aquaman 2. But this new version of Superman played by David Cornsweet will be the Superman that my son will grow up with. And I'm looking forward to sharing this with him. Along with, of course, going back to watch the 1978 Richard Donner Christopher Reed version to show him where it all started. But this is going to be the Superman of his generation. So take us up, up and away, David Corn sweat. I can't wait to see how high you go. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. I want to thank Brandon Barrick and Gina Ippolito for their help researching this video. I'm Eric Voss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.